My name's Seth and welcome to church. Thank you so much for joining us here online at Oma Community Church. We pray that today's service will bring life, love and hope into the heart of your world.
on behalf of the Shields family, the leadership team, and everybody here at the Community Church in Oma. If you're joining us for the first time today, I'm so glad that you've taken the time to come and join us and delve into the Word of God with us as part of our digital experience here at the Community Church in Oma. I'm going to read to you from the book of Galatians, and we're going to go chapter 4. And we're going to go from verse 21 through to the end of the chapter. And so this is a collection of talks that we as the community church in Oma have been journeying through for a while, going through the book of Galatians. And really, the heart behind this series of talks, the heart behind these messages is that you would be able to recognize yourself as a child of God. And as a result of that recognition, you would be able to move to new levels of intimacy with him that you would be able to rest in his love and ultimately stop striving for the approval of God that you already have because of Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ascension into heaven. So hey, if you've got a Bible and you'd like to open it with me or if you want to get your phone out or whatever device that you're not using to follow me on right now, let's jump into the Word of God together and then let's unpack some gospel truths the heart of this particular series called Gospel Truths. Let's pull out a gospel truth that I hope will help you to live freer and lighter as you go through the rest of your days. And so it says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 21 and onwards, Tell me who you want to be under the law. Are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born in the ordinary way, but his son by the free woman was born as the result of a promise. Paul goes on to say this. These things may be taken figuratively, for the woman represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Now Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother, for it is written, Be glad, O barren woman, who bears no children, break forth and cry aloud. You who have no labor pains, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now you brothers like Isaac, are children of promise. At that time, the son born in the ordinary was persecuted, the son born by the power of the Spirit. It is the same now. But what does the scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers, we are not children of the slave woman but of the free woman so the title of today's message the title of this talk is what are you looking at what are you looking at you see i believe this with all of my heart that if you see yourself as a slave that you will live like a slave but if you see yourself as a child of God, as an heir to his throne of grace, you will live in a way that would demonstrate that you are a child of God, an heir to his throne of grace. Because your position will determine your perspective. One of the greatest challenges that you and I will face as children of God is accepting the fact that we are free. Accepting the fact that we are no longer slaves. You see, it's one thing to know that you are free, but it's another thing to begin to learn to live free. Let me read you some very 
Insightful statistics. According to government statistics in the UK, 78% of criminals reoffend within nine years of release from prison. And 39.3% of those people do it in their first year. According to the Northern Ireland charity, ARC, who work with people who are trapped in a cycle of addiction, 60% of people who access treatment facilities for alcohol and substance abuse in the UK relapse. How many of us, if we're honest, keep slipping into old patterns of behaviour? How many of us, if we are honest, keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again? How many of us, if we are honest, feel like we can't get ourselves out of the place that we find ourselves in? How many of us, if we are honest, feel like we're trapped? How many of us, if we're honest, keep responding negatively to the events, people, places and spaces in our lives, both past and present, because we haven't been able to deal with the emotion attached to those events, people, places, spaces, both past and present? How many of us feel like we've lost hope and are stuck with the cards that we have felt and been dealt. And I dare say it, how many of us are trapped in a victim mentality, in a victim mindset? You see, these are the hallmarks, hallmarks sorry, of a slave mentality. The hallmarks of a person who has yet to learn how to live free. You see, when a prisoner is released from their prison cell, when they are released from captivity into prison, they need to learn how to live freely. And if they don't learn how to live freely, they go back into the limiting negative behaviors that they find themselves brought, that brought them into captivity in the first place. The reason that somebody who has got a substance misuse issue, an alcohol dependency, a drug dependency or any other kind of dependency, the reason that they keep going back to that particular thing is because they haven't found a way to learn how to live freely. You only have to look at the cycle of addiction to understand this in greater detail and at greater depth. I know in my own life, in my own experience, getting off drugs was easier than staying off drugs. I have had the good fortune of being able to access great resources in our nation where I was able to do a detox. And getting through the detox, as much as that was a very uncomfortable process, once I was through the detox, I could manage that, I could maintain that. But then the problem was is that I began to step into freedom again and leave the detox unit as I was exposed to all of my triggers, I would find myself going back into the behaviors that actually I had just been set free from. Why? Because my stinking, my thinking was stinking. And that's the problem, that's the issue. As we are set free, we need to learn how to live free. As we are released from captivity, we need to learn how to live free. As we are released from being slaves to the law, we need to learn how to live in the new covenant that is given to us through Jesus' life, death and resurrection. But the good news today is that none of these things actually come as a surprise to God. God is not surprised. God is not worried. God is not sitting on his throne of grace, panicking and freaking out, thinking, oh dear, what am I going to do? He already has given us a plan. He already has demonstrated to us that there is a strategy for us that will help us to learn how to live freely. The Jewish people found themselves in captivity a long, long time ago. You can read about it in the book of Exodus. They have been exiled in Egypt and they were there for 210 years approximately. And during that 210 years of captivity, they came under many hardships. They were oppressed. They were beat down. And then all of a sudden, there's an and suddenly moment. And God appears and God says, I am going to free you. 
Then I'm going to teach you how to live freely. Then I'm going to give you a sense of purpose and you will live a life that will praise me. So God understood the process. God understood the journey. And God made these promises to demonstrate to the people of Israel and to us today that learning to live free is more than just being set free. In Exodus chapter 3 verses 6 to 7, he said to the Israelite nation, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. So God get, gets it, God understands it, and God is not surprised by your circumstances right now. God is not surprised by your inability to live freely because he has been dealing with our humanity for thousands of years since the beginning of time. And just as he said to the Israelite nation thousands of years ago, whilst they were slaves to the nation of Egypt, he says the same to us today. I will bring you out. I will deliver you. I will redeem you and I will take you. He's already set us free from our sinful nature. He's already set us free as slaves to sin through Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ascension to heaven. And now he wants to teach us to live free so that we can live a life of purpose, with purpose and for purpose so that we could return to him and live a life of worship, praising him for all that he has done, all that he is giving us and all that he does in partnership with us. So how do we get to that place? How do we get to that place of recognition and understanding? Well, it's very simple and it's like this. When your position changes, your habits must change with the position as well. When your position changes, your habits, your behavior must change with that as well. A number of years ago, um, the Shields family decided to purchase a camper van. And Jenny and I went and we borrowed some money from the bank and we bought the camper van and Jenny fell in love with it and I just didn't have that same level of affection with it that Jenny had. And it took me a year, believe it or not, to actually find the desire and the courage to drive this camper van. This camper van was very big. It was very large in comparison to the vehicle that I have been driving. I drive a Citroen C3 and with my Citroen C3 it's like a little box car if you're not familiar with them as opposed to this huge bus of a camper van that we had bought. But not only was this thing huge, not only was it terrifying for me to actually comprehend beginning to learn to drive, the steering wheel was also on the wrong side. This was a left hand drive vehicle for us in the UK, we drive on the right hand side, which is always the right side. And with this particular vehicle, it was on the left hand side, which meant that all of the apparatus required to drive the vehicle was also on the wrong side as well. So as my position changed, my habits had to change as well. Every time I was driving along and I wanted to change gear, I found myself rolling the window down because I would touch the knob, but the knob wasn't for the gear stick where it should have been, it was for rolling down the window. You see, church, when your position changes, your habits must change with it as well. And so as we shift from our slave position to our co-heir position, our behavior needs to change with it. We need to learn how to live freely. Paul writes this in chapter 5 of this incredible book to the Galatian church. He says, it is for freedom that Christ set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened by the yoke of slavery. In other words, don't be burdened by your old patterns of behavior and begin to embrace these new patterns of behavior and stand firm in them. Stand firm in the comfort, in the knowledge, in the assurance of knowing that you're no longer a slave but a co heir in Christ and then begin to adopt the behaviors of Christ so that you can live like 
Christ. Paul's reminding the Galatian church, he's reminding his readers of their new position. No longer slaves, but free. I am a huge fan of the book of Ephesians. Not only am I a huge fan of the book of Galatians, in fact, I'm just a huge fan of the Bible. It is God's word. It is living, breathing, and active. And it is the only book that you will ever read. As Brian Somerville, my pastor, would say, it's the only book you'll ever read with the author present. And the author of the book wants to speak to you as you read the words, and he's got something to communicate and articulate to us. But let me read to you from the book of Ephesians a couple of verses that I hope will encourage you to help you to see yourself as a child of God, but also to understand and appreciate and respect the blessings that you have in Jesus Christ. Paul writes this, he says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. If we were together right now, I would be looking at you. I'd probably be going into one, jumping up and down, going, can I get an amen? Write it in the comments, write it in the post. Can I get an amen? We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He goes on to say this, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. There's more. There's so much more to come. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Christ Jesus. Wow. In accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Will you hear this? Will you hear this? In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. I hope you are excited as you hear this. This is what is available to us as co-heirs, as children of God who are no longer slaves. And there's more to come. Come here, come here, come here. And there's more. Anybody from Northern Ireland of a certain age will get that. And he made known to us the mystery of of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ. <sighs> this is so good. To be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head Christ. In him we were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with his purpose. In order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed you were marked in him with a seal of the promised Holy Spirit. There's more to come. Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his Just in that small snippet of rich tapestry of God's word, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, we see this, that as children of God, as co-heirs who are no longer slaves, but children of the Lord Most High, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. We are chosen. We have been made holy and blameless. We have been redeemed, forgiven. God has lavished goodness upon us. 
we are united with heaven. Our humanity and his divinity coexist in relationship because of Jesus Christ. We are purposed. I love this one. We are included. Hey, there's nothing worse than feeling left out. There's nothing worse than being left out. I don't know what it was like for you in school, but there were times when I was a child in school when we would be playing games and we would be like picking and there would be this line. And there would be this line and, people, and there would be two team captains and there would be like, I'll take you and, and I'll take you and I'll take you and I'll take you. And as the numbers are whittling down, as the crowd is getting smaller, I remember being left to last a couple of times and thinking I was the booby prize. There's nothing worse than feeling like we are left out. But yet the word of God tells us that we are included. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am, the Alpha, the Omega, the Beginning and the End comes and says, you are on my team. You are included. You're not left out. You're not last place. You're not the booby, ch- booby prize. You are are included not only that we are marked with a seal of ownership which is the holy spirit and we are guaranteed an inheritance imagine that we are guaranteed let that word just rest on you you are guaranteed an inheritance from god himself There's an old Indian kind of legendary story where an old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. And he says this, a fight is going on inside of me, he says to the boy. It is a terrible fight and it is between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. He continued to say this. The other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, Truth, compassion, and faith. And he goes on to say the same fight is going on inside of you and inside every other person too. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which one will win? Which wolf will win? And the old Cherokee simply replied, whichever one. You see, we have a choice today. We can choose to believe in the things of God. We can choose to feed our spirits, strengthen our spirits, clothe ourselves in the best possible sense in what God says. Or we can choose to believe the lies of the world and the enemy and we can live as slaves. Paul wrote to the church in Romans said this, Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Romans chapter 12. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. To paraphrase that and to put it into context for today's message, hey, stop living like a slave and live free. Stop living like a slave and learn to live free. You're probably sitting at home or wherever you are tapping into this message going, gosh, that was very easy for you to say. But you don't know more of my world. You don't know my life. You don't know my circumstance. You don't know what's going on with me. How can I just do that? Well, let me tell you how you can do that. And I'm going to give you three things real quick as we close. The first thing is this. Trust the process. You see, becoming Christ-like is actually a process. It's a journey. It's a process of sanctification that requires acts from us. We need to be courageous. We need to be obedient. We need to be disciplined. We need to endure and we need to have vision. Our vision is to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. And then do the things that we need to do on a daily basis, those habits, those behaviours that need to change because our position has changed so that we 
can become Christ-like, so that we can form spiritually. We got to read our Bibles. We got to pray. We got to pray just to make it today. We've got to fast. We have got to praise God. We have got to worship God. We have got to gather together. We have got to break bread together. We've got to do communion. We've got to rest. We've got to have Sabbath. We've got to have devotional time. We've got to have intimate time with God and the things of God. Through the process, we've got to trust the Holy Spirit. We've got to open ourselves up in partnership to the Holy Spirit through all of those disciplines that we do on an ongoing, continual basis. As our habits change, we too will change. But the second thing is this, is that you've got to have patience and you've got to wait on the Lord. If you are physically unfit and you decide today that you are going to go out and run one mile today, guess what? Tomorrow morning you will still be unfit. But if you were to decide to get up the next day and run another mile, the next day you will be a little bit fitter. And if you do it again the next day, you will be a little bit fitter. And if you were to do it the next day and maybe go a little bit further, you would find that you will get fitter. And it is the same in this transformation process, this journey where we apply the disciplines because our position has changed, our behavior changed, changes with that, and then as our behavior changes, we change, and if we commit to the processes, and if we're patient with the processes, waiting on God and allowing God through His Holy Spirit to do that work inside of us, we will be transformed. We will be changed. We will live like co-heirs. We will live as children of God. And very finally, Put on the armor of God. So let's trust the process. Let's be patient in the process. But let's put on the armor of God. Let me read you this from the book of Ephesians. It says, finally, this is Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. I want to dance when I read that. So you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Paul says, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand on your ground and after you have done everything to stand, hear this, after you have done everything you can to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, Take up the shield of faith, which will extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Hey, be blessed. If you'd like to know more about becoming a Christian or more about OCC, feel free to use the contact information below. If you have any prayer requests, prayer supports, physical needs or pastoral needs, please reach out and we'd love to help you in any way we can.